to talk to you about zines and mini comics. This is just a small, super curated selection of some of the mini comics from my collection. I have over a thousand mini comics. I've been attending conventions as an artist and as a shopper, a consumer for over 10 years. And I always come home with loads of mini comics. So what are zines and what are mini comics? Well, zines, mini comics, and ash cans those three terms can often be used interchangeably. A mini comic though typically features a comic. A zine can feature a comic and can be a sketchbook or it can be a collection of things. And an ash can typically refers to a cheaply put together homemade hand bound or home bound uh, mini book on inexpensive paper. So ash can, ash can, ash can, ash can, ash can, ash can. And they're all different. Some are books of illustrations, some are themed books, some are sketchbooks, and some are indeed mini comics. A quick caveat, some people find the term ash can to be demeaning. They feel like when the artist uses it, they are demeaning their own work or devaluing their own work. I learned the term ash can while at SCAD and it really was just to refer to a cheaply produced book with the intention of either selling for very little money or for trading with other artists. There is no value implication attached to the word, at least where I was taught. You will find older artists typically referring to their zines as ash cans or their sketchbook collections as ash cans. Just anything that isn't perfect bound. It's not meant to be like an artist edition or anything special. I mean, of course, they're all kind of special, but like it's not a high production value item. Now, there are minis and zines that can be high production value items, but ash cans are typically intended to be kind of a lower production value. And I make a lot of ash cans. I make a lot of minis. I don't necessarily make a lot of zines, but I own a lot of zines. And some of the minis that I've made are mini comics like Pickin' and Peelin' here, which is a little 10 page comic about a crawfish boil in Louisiana. And I give this away for free to kids at shows or artistically challenge. This is another title people take offense at because they're like, oh, but you're a wonderful artist. But the point was this is a themed uh so I did a year where every month I did different drawing challenges and I listed what the drawing challenges were. Hence challenged it's a sketchbook of drawing challenges. Or like Lilliputian Living, it has a color cover. Sometimes with my minis, I'll decorate it a little bit more, but I really like putting together my Inktobers into a mini comic or an ash can form so I can sell it at cons. In fact, Lilliputian Living, 31 Days Under the Waves, and Magical Girl March all kind of fit that inked theme month prompt theme. So not, you know, nothing super high end. Another sketchbook example is when I went to Japan the first time I put together an ash can or a sketchbook of the sketches that I did while I was there. And I need to do another one for my recent trip to Japan. I have sketches. I just need to put them into a format. So these are ash cans, sketchbooks, mini comics. They usually sell for under $5 each. Some go for as little as one. I am usually willing to trade any of these for any other mini that someone else has made. So what about something that's a little more high production value? Well, there are all kinds of zines and mini comics that have a higher production value. We have here a collection of minis I purchased at A2 CAF last year. And these are kind of factory theme minis. And this is a really cute collection. Where they're all themed after, like this is the ketchup packet, for example. This would be the shake. And they have screen printed covers, but the inside is still toner printed, very inexpensive on copy paper. And this allows the artist to be able to, sh to sell it at a lower price point because usually with zines, minis, ash can sketchbooks, we're selling them ourselves. There aren't a lot of stores that will necessarily carry these. There are some, but a lot of them want that higher production value so they can charge more for it.
And I'm clipping through these sort of fast because if you have the chance, I want you to purchase these from the creators. I don't want you to necessarily just read what I'm flipping. I'm just trying to show you guys. Oh, I love the cover on this. It was done on like, almost like a parchment paper. So minis don't have to be black and white, but they're usually black and white because they're a little less expensive to do. And if they're gonna do color printing, it might be risograph, it might be screen printed, or it might be color printing from like a copier. So here is another mini in a really interesting accordion format. And I got this at Noka's Fest, I think last year. Oh. Struggling to find the correct orientation. So it is an accordion style spot color mini comic, a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. You can either flip through it like this or you can unspool the whole thing. And what's really cool about this one is no staples needed. Now the downside with this one is you need huge pieces of paper in order to get this printed. And zines can be on all sorts of topics and they can range from being a collection of mini comics, maybe an anthology of mini comics, to a mixture of comics, poetry, illustrations, photos, short fiction, to um, just short fiction or just illustrations, really zines, which is kind of short for magazines, can be almost anything you want them to be, and they can be on all sorts of topics. Some very popular topics are people's coming out stories, um, people's transitioning stories, stories about dealing with mental illness, um, travel stories, uh, recipes, stories about a place you've left and loved, but it can also be about mathematical solutions for a global, global crisis. Really, they can be about any topic that you're really passionate about and that you wanna distribute a visual, small print, small press sort of format. So even the Jack Chick comics, which are interesting in their own right. Um, they tend to be very heavy handed religious dogma that many find to be quite offensive and um, often misre misrepresent various religions. Um, even those would be considered zines in mini comics. So it isn't just a certain type of comics. There can really be any kind of comic or illustration. It can be a way to present sort of a more polished webcomic in a smaller form factor that um, fans, like big fans of your work who want a physical copy of your work, they can have this. And you can make one copy, you can make 100 copies, you can make 1,000 copies. The print number isn't really a factor in whether or not something counts as a mini comic or a zine. It's sort of the handmade factor, the... Um, intention factor, the fact that it's the artist selling them themselves. And often there's a lot of love that goes into making these. And what's really cool about zines and minis is that often the only way you can get them is directly from the artist. So through their online shop or through um, buying from them at conventions, there's even like uh, Cowboy House used to be a comic subscription club, and um, I think there's another one currently going on, although I don't remember the name for it. I'm going to show you guys this one in a minute. This is really cool. Cowboy House did some really cool stuff. So you can do four coma style comics. It's not limited to um, the format of the comics either. So it's really cool and that oh that was from tcaf that's awesome um it's really cool because it opens up comics and comic like things and illustration to anyone who wants to do it and that's something i've always really loved about comics and uh, indie comics and web comics is that anyone who wants to do this can do it the cost is really low the effort i mean there is some effort but it doesn't have to be 
the same amount of effort that you would put into a published book. You know, you can do it for fun. You can do it to collect a series of ideas like creature comfort cooking is really interesting because there's illustrations, a lot of text, um, but also comics. So this would be kind of more of a zine because it is kind of that combination. But I would definitely still call it a mini comic because obviously there's loads of comics in here. And I love that there's an illustration of the recipe and then a comic that goes with it. And zines, comics, mini comics, ash cans, they all present an opportunity to collaborate with friends, other like-minded people. I personally would love to be in a um, comic subscription. I'd love to contribute to that, but it tends to be groups of friends who do that. And I don't have a lot of friends who are interested in making minis or interested in making zines regularly. They might do it once a year, if that. So here it's more like a book, like a picture book where we have illustrations and text. And who doesn't love cat stories? And this was picked up last year at Noka's Fest. And they don't, a lot of mini comics and zines are staple bound. I think I have a few tutorials for you guys on how to do that at home. But some of them are also like punch bound or hand sewn. And see this one, it's not quite all ages, so I apologize for that, but this one is a really good example of a zine because it has a little bit of everything. There's comics, there's illustration, there's prose, there's collage. I think a lot of these are from Noka's Fest. And here is a good example of, um, I was talking about how some mini comics, some zines are about um, mental health. This is one about the anxiety behind receiving compliments. So it's also a good way to share feelings with other people, share um, an emotion, share an experience with people. It's all about communication, which is something I really love. That's another thing I really love about comics. So it's like this very egalitarian kind of um, communication. And you're sharing an experience when you can buy them directly from the creator at a show. You can have like a human moment with the person who made the work, which I think is something that's truly lost with web comics. You really lose that opportunity to engage with the creator as a human. And I have, I have a seriously huge collection of zines that um, I need, ooh, I didn't realize there are stickers in there, that I need to better go through, better organize. So this was also purchased at Noka's Fest. And this was really exciting because the, I'd watched the artist make this. This was her, their Inktober project. I watched them make it through their Instagram. And then I was able to go purchase a copy at Noka's Fest and talk to them about, you know, getting to watch them make their comic on Instagram and how exciting that was. So you really have opportunities for engagement with something like, like zines, mini comics, ash cans, when it's a smaller project with a more limited, more limited scope, you really have more opportunity to engage with people. You can also have minis, and this is a really nicely produced mini. It's got really nice printing, nice cover stock, nice interior stock. You can definitely have color minis if you want. It does cost more, so you're gonna have to charge more or you can't do it just for trades. I think this one, this was purchased at Nogus Fest. This was purchased at 
one of the apes, probably the first ape I attended. Well, no, probably the second one, the first one that I tabled at. So you see, it can also be a collection of sketches. And this kind of encapsulates a time period in this person's life, which is really cool. And this was purchased at a 2 calf Isn't it neat that I can remember where I got these from? And I have so many, and yet it's still, I can see the person's face. I can remember the interaction we had that's really important to me. And something I'm kind of disappointed about as conventions change is that more people behind the table, and I say this as someone who works conventions, they're not really interested in engaging with their customers. They're not really interested in having a short conversation. They're not really interested in even having customer service. Um, and I know that most of these minis I purchased it was because I liked the person, I liked talking to the person, I liked their art. I wanted to take some of that home with me so I could continue that experience. When you're making comics to sell in this format, so much of it is the experience you're sharing. It's a little bit of like a lifestyle sale where you are usually selling to either someone who's already into comics, makes their own comics, really loves and cares about comics, or someone maybe who wanted to do that at one point and still carries that torch, or someone who wants to go into that. So it's very safe to assume most of the people you're selling your comics to are comic people, not just fans. And that's what's really cool about minis and indie comics as compared to um, capes, superhero style comics, is that so much of our audience are fellow comic people who make comics, who love comics, or who want to make comics, have tried to make comics, they write comics, they draw comics, they're invested in the community themselves. So that's why I'm sad when I encounter people who are not interested in talking to their customers and they're not, they don't really care at all. Um, and something that's really gotten disappointing for me is more and more indie shows are allowing group distributors to sell. So you don't get to meet the artist. You can't get your comic signed by the artist. I mean, in a way, group distribution is great because it means you don't have to attend every single show that you can have a presence at. But the difference between a comic collective and a group distributor is with a comic collective there's going to be a majority of the members present at the show at some point whereas with a distributor there's one or two people who may not have made any of the comics on the table selling the comics so you might ask them about the comic and they can't answer any questions at all and that's really frustrating as a comic creator because it's killing all of that engagement so i know i picked this up at nuka's fest and it's around one half zine so i had to because rumiko takahashi was such a big influence on my work and i really really love this artist's art as well because it's really cartoony and fun so this is definitely more of they say a sketch scene but it's full of comics which just look at this that's like a lot of work and there's action scenes it's just really cool This was another one where I got to watch the creator make this on Instagram. And it was really exciting because this was their first watercolor comic. So, you know, I was definitely cheering for them from the sidelines. And then I got to purchase it from them at Noka's Fest and talk to them about their work, which was really nice. So for me, mini comics are about um, communication and engagement and getting to talk to other comic people and have like a moment of equality with other comic people. They did a beautiful binding job. And I know not everybody wants to do it that way. Not everybody can do it that way. I respect that, but for me, that's where it's really cool is like you have this cool moment of awesome art awesome comics so maybe ideally someone really cool that you're having like a five minute moment with um i'm not recommending anybody barnacle their table for a half hour but five minutes i think is fair especially if you're dropping a pretty significant amount of money buying comics from them just to talk about making comics because otherwise why are you at the show why are you selling stuff if you don't love what you're selling so 
Finally, we're gonna, oh yeah, Paper Frog, wow. Oh, hey, this one's been in my collection for a long time. It's one of my first, I really wanna say it's from a Mocha Fest. Oh yeah, this was about, and then when you reread comics, because one of the things I used to really love to do was read the minis I'd purchased while on the plane ride back. Because when you live in Louisiana, when you live in Savannah, Georgia, when you live in Nashville, Tennessee, there aren't a lot of comic shows. So I would travel for Mocha Fest. I would travel for SBX. I would travel for Decaf. I would travel for Ape, which is hugely expensive. Um, but one of the things I loved to do was read the minis on the plane and discuss them with my boyfriend because he likes mini comics a lot too. He's really into it as well. In fact, the Cowboy House subscription is his subscription. He's a big, he was a big fan of the subscription service and he really seemed to enjoy every box they sent. They really knocked it out of the park. They did a great job, but it's just cool to be able to have these moments and these experiences. So this is really cool. Uh, the conceit of this was an amusement park. And I think it was the last cowboy house that was sent out, something like that. It was towards the end. And they made a map, which was just like really cool, right? Like, I love maps. I love comics with maps. And it's a watercolor map, so I love it even more. And it looks legit like I could go to this place. And then they have like the legend on the side. So a lot of care and detail went into making this. And then, oh, wait. That looks like it's marker. I wonder if they hand drew. Oh, I think that was the point for the last box is they hand, they included a hand drawn and colored panel. The organizers handle was like handsome Jeff or pretty Jeff. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember his full name and I'm also trying to find it on here. Sometimes I'm better with internet handles than I am with people's names. Oh, I love watercolor comics. And just making something with a group with like a theme in a group every month or every three months, whatever schedule you could keep. I just think that's such a cool idea and it's something I really, really want to do. And somehow I never meet anybody who wants to do this with me, but I really want to do it. And I'm getting, sorry, I'm getting all like fired up looking at mini comics, talking about cool mini comic ideas. Like it's just awesome. And then you have the credit. There we go, Jeff Gibbons. All right. And this was a first edition, so 23 out of 60. So there were 60 people who were subscribed to Cowboy House, which is really cool. Anyway, that's just a few of the minis from my collection, as well as some of the minis I've released and that I sell. Um, I really want you guys to try making a mini of your own. I have a few tutorials here on the channel, and if you need more help, I can always help you with them. Um, minis are definitely a phenomenal way to start making comics. Please do not start with your epic. Start with a mini, a 10 page something, even if it's part of your epic's world. A mini is a great way to do a little bit of practice world building, to figure out which methods work best for you, to sort of hammer out how you want to produce this thing, what kind of work schedule you can do. It's a great way to start building an audience. It's a great way to have a product very quickly. Um, I just think minis are awesome. Like I really love mini comics. I like making mini comics. I like sharing mini comics. I love buying mini comics, maybe too much. And um, well, maybe, so my dream one day, since I mentioned I have thousands, literally thousands of mini comics, is I want to open a coffee shop in my hometown of Luling, Louisiana, which is the most not comics place probably in the world. Well, no, there's probably more not comics places than Luling, but it's like actively against comics, all right? It's like Footloose, but comics. Um, I want to open a coffee shop in Luling and I want to call it Coco's Comics and Coffee. And I basically want to do 
the Japanese ramen cafe kind of thing where I have just walls of comics for people to read while they enjoy comics. So one day I'm going to have a huge mini comic slash zine library for my customers to enjoy. And maybe one day I'll lead workshops there. I don't know. That's the someday dream is to have a place of my own where I make comics and a dedicated audience of people who not only love my comics, but love comics in general, want to learn how to make comics, trust me enough to teach them how to make comics and want to enjoy other people's comics. So I really hope this video inspires you guys to make your own minis. You can start super duper simple. Like these here are really basic, super simple mini comics. There's not much to the ones that I make. I don't put the time in that some people do because I just want to have something inexpensive um, that I can give away or share or sell for very little money at shows. Um, it's just a cool way to kind of collate my work into a physical form. So it's not just on Instagram or it's not just here or it's not just on Twitter. It's actually physical, especially since my Kara books do take a while to make. But I really, really hope you guys will give making minis, zines or ash cans a try. If you ever want to exchange minis with me, let me know if enough of you guys want to do it. I'll arrange something and set up a P.O. box. I think that would be a lot of fun. And if you guys have any specific questions or if you want to see anything demonstrated, let me know in the comments below and I will get to doing that. So I'm kind of doing this in preparation for a zine slash mini comic workshop that I am leading at the Gallatin Public Library this weekend. So I like doing my prep with you guys so that I go in and I'm ready. And I think it's a great way to share with two different audiences. So I will see you guys again really soon, probably with another mini comic video. Bye guys.